are you now open to those new ideas that are coming? I mean, obviously you are because you're talking about it and you're, you're verbalizing that, but is that now the norm? Like if someone's going through med school, mm -hmm. are they now open to the, to the more holistic approaches? Are they now understanding alcohol use disorder and how that could down the line prevent a patient from having to take acid reflux yeah. medication, blood pressure medication, sleep medication, mm -hmm. antidepressants. So in, in, so what is happening? Like what is happening in the training of our young doctors now? Yeah, there's, there's probably more exposure to complementary alternative medicines and nutritional exercise, meditation, mindfulness, other types of wellness. Maybe it dovetails in some places with hallucinogens, which are a very kind of like hot area in psychiatry for different disorders, but kind of leaving the standard Western biomedical model and accepting that there's a lot of other stuff that people do throughout the world, throughout history, and that are not just kind of doctor, pharmacy, and kind of treatment plan. I, I would not say medical schools in the United States are great at teaching complementary and alternative medicine and making every physician graduate, you know, a competent practitioner, but there is kind of recognition more and more that complementary approaches can be helpful and may be just as effective for common problems like sleep disorders, sometimes weight loss, back pain, and other kind of musculoskeletal and pain syndrome. So there's all sorts of, I think, kind of approaches we should be open to. And I think more and more medical schools are able to acknowledge that people can get help from a lot of different providers and sources and treatment paradigms. I think that we get a little testy if it's like, okay, but you have something I know I have a good treatment for, and you're kind of refusing it because you have some opposition to medical Western medicine in general, that maybe you get less sympathy from the medical school dean. Like, you know, if you have colon cancer, there's a pretty like standard approach to it. And if you want to do alternative medicine for something that, you know, we know could be curative, then I think doctors still kind of resent alternative approaches uh, in some of those scenarios. But I think in general, I don't know, the way I was trained, not so much in my medical school, but then in my residency and in my kind of career where I'm now at NYU, I was pretty open to a lot of different approaches to behavioral problems, to chronic medical problems, especially to like pain and kind of psychosomatic issues where we just don't have great treatments. That's the other thing. Like if I had an easy curative thing, then I'd tell you about it. But in a lot of cases, people are spending a lot of time with physicians, but the physician doesn't have like a great answer to some of these chronic complaints. And there you really have to be open to exploring alternative approaches. One of the anti-drinking supplements I've seen on the market is niacin, and you can buy that on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Are you aware, or could you just explain to our listener the pros and cons of taking niacin as a stop drinking supplement? Yeah, I'm not that familiar with its effects, if any, on drinking. Niacin itself is like a B vitamin. It can cause some kind of like flushing. If you take it as a supplement, it's kind of famous for, for some like side effects and a flushing reaction is one. And, uh, but it is, uh, you, you know, it is um, part like fortified grains. Like when my kid eats bread at school, they're probably getting some extra niacin because uh, it's been seen as kind of a heart healthy B vitamin. I, I really don't know about what you're bringing up here though, the the effects on drinking using it as a supplement i'm all ears but i don't know any mm. like studies or analysis yeah it causes you to flush like you know that uh -huh. flushing feeling like you said and the idea is that you take niacin and again you're ambivalent to drinking you you don't interesting want to, you don't want to drink yeah 